And our second decade of marriage, people thought we had a great marriage. That's because we had learned to not talk to each other about any topic that mattered. So by then we had several babies. So we're just doing logistical stuff, taking care of the babies, keeping them alive, work stuff, the house. And so we didn't talk about anything of depth. So it looked like, well, they're doing really well. They're doing much better. And we let all the marriage ministries and marriage classes. And, you know, we were the go-to couple. We weren't connected at all. We were just living in the same house. And we had stopped engaging on any level of of depth at all. Welcome to the Connection Codes podcast. This is the podcast where we break open our emotions to take us from being disconnected to connected in our relationships and with ourselves. I am your host, Tara Wages, and I am here today with marriage and family therapist, clinical sexologist, Dr. Glenn Hill, and his incredible wife, Phyllis, who puts all of this together so we can apply it to our lives. And together, They are the founders of the Connection Codes, which is the science behind human connection. It essentially teaches us how to connect with each other. Hello, world. Yes. Mm, Hi, (laughs) friends. So uh, we just got back from Alaska Mm. last night, and um, the biggest thing is that it's a three-hour time difference. Mm. So like this morning, to get up and get here on time. I didn't think about that. Uh, like sad. we, uh, let's see, I woke up at five Alaska time, okay. which is eight here, which is late for here, but right. five is pretty early for us to get up. And, um, but it's all right. We, uh, came in last night and got to see a few friends before coming back to our house. And then we had a flat tire on the way on the interstate. Mm-hmm. Which and is poor planning on our it's part. It's very poor planning. When you've <laughs> been gone for like yeah. almost two weeks yeah. and then you're on a different time zone planet and it's dark here and you're going, you got to be kidding me. We had a flat tire. So right. delayed us a bit in getting home, but we're super glad to be here today. Yeah. And we loved our time in mm, Alaska. Absolutely. So many adventures. Yeah. And I think one of my favorite things was that um, for those of you who don't know, uh, we live in the lower 48. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so they're constantly talking about how the lower 48. And what were some of the other things when they leave well, the they, state of Alaska? Yeah, they actually what's that call called? it going outside. Yeah, they're going so, outside. Yeah, next week oh. I have to go outside. Mm, yeah. And then so then I started saying, well, you guys in the upper one, I don't think that's how they refer to themselves, but I started referring to them as the upper one. They probably like that. Since we're the. Well, they, they did. Would laugh. Yes, yes, they did. They like the sound of that, but we're in the lower 48 and, um, I wear that proudly. We're in the lower 48, but it was an amazing adventure. We got to go flight seeing and saw, flew over glaciers and got to see bears. Almost died. Well, for a minute there, well, it, it felt like a we were scary. about to die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you had to process There's a so lot many of fear. Wind currents. The beauty of Alaska is just incredible. Yeah. Which I want to mention that y'all were there because you were speaking to a yes, church, yes. which not only were you hosting a conference for the church, but you were working with the church staff right. and mm-hmm. doing some individual yeah. one-on-one intensives for yeah. leaders within the church. Mm-hmm. And so it's just so incredible to know what all you offer yeah. to people yeah. right. and that you don't just do it for churches. You've also gone into businesses and do mm-hmm. it, but it's given us the opportunity to see so much cool things, yeah. you know, yeah. like, yeah. um, yeah. And this is one of the most, I don't know what you call it, receptive bought in groups that we've ever mm-hmm. worked with. Um, I mean, they were primed. And so by the time we got there, we hit the ground running and they were really, really eager. So that was pretty cool yeah. just getting to see people that are really on point and to see how fast people went or how far people went so fast Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. because they were already primed for this. I mean, virtually everybody we had sat with, uh, had already read the book. A lot of them had done the master class. Uh, so there was, I don't remember if that's true or not, but I think there was nobody we sat down with who was like clueless, had no, mm, right. no exposure at all to the connection codes. So that was kind of fun. It just, it made it easier for us, but, uh, and therefore a whole lot more fun that they're ready to rock and roll, Yeah, which is really cool. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Well, today to dive into our podcast topic, we are going to be answering a question from one of our listeners who is so vulnerable in his Mm. email to us, which this does bring up the point. If you have any questions, if there's anything that is in the back of your head that you're like, oh, please dive into that. You really have two options. You can send us an email at info at connectioncodes.co and send us the question Or if you're like, hey, I would like to do an in-session with you Mm. on the podcast. I know we're not the only ones struggling. We actually want to come on and talk about this. Send me your information at info at connectioncodes.co and we'll have you on and you'll get a counseling session Mm. that would help so Mm. many people. But this listener said that Glenn frequently says that he has learned more about Phyllis in the last two or three years than ever before. I would like more info On what happened between what do you hear when I say thank you for unloading the dishwasher to the last two or three years? A friend of mine has compared the process to weeding a garden. When you clean the garden like Glenn and Phyllis, you go out daily and pull a few weeds. Most are not deep rooted, but sometimes one is. I feel more like trying to clean up a garden that's been abandoned for 35 years. All of the weeds have deep roots and we only clean a couple of square feet per day. It feels like we aren't making any progress. It frequently seems like more pain and shame than growth. I would love to hear what that process was like for others. Mm. Man. Wow, that's so good. Yeah. Well, you, while you were reading that, I was thinking about the the dishwasher story mm. because I, I think, you know, when I would say to Glenn, thank you for unloading the dishwasher, what he heard was so many negatives, you know, what a mm. loser he was, an unproductive person, et cetera, which we've done a podcast on that. So if you've not heard that one, mm-hmm. definitely go back and listen to that one. But I was thinking after that, uh, and I then understood that he hears things I don't say. Mm. The unspoken words that he hears were very, very negative. Mm. And... I, though, began to realize that for both of us, there are things that are happening that the other person is not aware of. Right. And I remember after that, that I was able to communicate to him that for me, um, I experienced Glenn as a warrior who had, you know, a spear and a, and a helmet and a shield, and he was... Mm you know, coming and I was just this little peasant and he was a big warrior. And so I just remember that conversation where Mm. me saying to him, this is how I experience you. And he was shocked and he could not believe that because what he was experiencing inside of himself Mm. that he would then so often say is that I look up to fleas. I'm below fleas. And so he is experiencing himself in our relationship as I was the warrior. Mm. I, Phyllis, was the strong one, mm. and he was lower than the fleas kind of thing. And, you know, no wonder we missed each other so much mm. in those days. Right. Because we just didn't even realize how we were experiencing or how the other was experiencing mm. us. Right. And one other thing that I, I remember thinking and being able to say to him that I was actually able to visualize is a um, circuit box. And I would say to him, there's times when you ask me, which is part of how we came to the what happens versus why, Mm. because Glenn was the why guy. And so when he would ask me questions, it was like I would short circuit. And I would then I would give him a still face, which right. is where the still face, came, you know, all of that verbiage and research started. And I would just blankly look at him, not because I was wanting to be whatever, defiant or difficult or, you know, mean. It was that I just really felt that yeah. my systems did a short circuit. Yeah. yeah. And, <clears throat> and we referenced it, you know, as the breaker in a breaker box mm. in an electrical panel. And if you plug in too much into a particular circuit, you know, you have a space heater and a hair dryer and, uh, you know, whatever. Once that breaker is tripped, it's irrelevant. If you go, oh, okay, well, then I'll unplug the space heater. Oh, well, I'll unplug, I won't use, you know, the, the dryer and the 
the hairdryer and the space heater at the same time. Well, no, the breaker's already tripped, so it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter what you do now because the breaker's tripped. And what we realized was that Phyllis would, the breaker would get tripped, and then she's gone. She's shut mm -hmm. down. And now it doesn't matter if I approach it differently. The breaker's tripped, and we would have to reset the breaker before we could uh, go on from there. And I, I see this so much with, uh, we were sitting with a couple, but he just knew if he explained it one more time to his wife, it would be fine. And finally, and, and I try to be very, very gentle and kind in sessions, but finally I said, dude, you can explain it to her 19 more times. It doesn't matter. That's, you have to find out what's happening for her. And he said, no, 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 no. You have to understand my intention. She needs to know what I meant by that. And I'm like, nope. It doesn't matter, and you're exhausting yourself and kind of pissing her off and wounding her in the process. So we have to get back and reset the breaker before we can actually get anywhere and explaining it five more times, which is what I always did. Mm -hmm. I always knew I was one more uh, drive-by, one more attempt, and then you would get it, and that was never the case. And I tried to always start that at about 11.15 at night uh, because – that's just the best time to have these deep conversations. And, of course, then literally it ends up at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Of course, once you had kids, you knew the babies were waking up at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was so overwhelming. Ugh, so much right. guilt about that. I miss so horribly. So how we got from that first, because that we, we always think of that as kind of the first time that you ever were aware of what was actually happening with me. Mm -hmm. And that was thousands of these horrible misses into our relationship but that and this is way pre-connection codes but that was the first time that we actually slowed down enough and you know I always say I'm the educated one Phyllis is the smart one she's the one that actually implements that because the reality is for these thousands of woundings what was happening was that Glenn was knocked off course but Glenn had no idea how to say that to Phyllis and you know, I, I think all of the benchmarks in our relationship have been things that you were aware of and that you came up with. And that was the, because again, Glenn, I should have been the one going, oh, babe, hold on. Let me see what happens for me there. What am I missing? Oh, I get flooded with shame whenever you say thanks for unloading the dishwasher, which is what I do now. Uh, but for many thousands of times, that's not what happened. And so you were the one that actually like, this is funky. This doesn't make sense. And even when you first mentioned it, I gave you some sort of snarky, rude response. And you were able to stay in it for some bizarre reason. Because you would have been completely correct to go, forget it, moron, and mm -hmm. walk out of the room. And you would have been totally correct, but absolutely wrong relationally. Uh, and you didn't, and you stayed uh, in it with me. And that was the big turn. So I do want to say to our listeners, it was not magic fairy dust. I would love to say, mm -hmm. and then we lived happily ever after, mm -hmm. and everything was wonderful from that point on, which is not true. And I always say we're the slow kids in the group because it took us a long time, and we didn't have the connection codes at the time. We didn't understand the concepts, the tools. Uh, so, I, And I want to make sure that's clear that we see couples progress so much faster. I mean, literally in days and weeks, they make big strides that took us literally years to do because we were pretty clueless but once we got a little bit of traction in that you know we were able to build on that and for example once Phyllis realized oh something funky happens with my partner when I say these not even benign things but these positive things babe thanks for unloading the dishwasher that's a good thing it's not mm. wrong it's not evil uh, but my experience of it was it was horrible and that started laying the foundation for us to have safe space. Uh, and, and that was a big turning point for when you realize that, oh, okay, this guy experiences this, and he just does. He's not trying to. He just does. He experiences pain in this. Mm -hmm. Well, I keep going back to the email that was sent in and trying to think about the time between the, you know, the dishwasher right. story and yeah. kind of where we are now. And... I, you know, it is for us, it was a slow process, but being able to show up and say what was happening for me was so huge. Mm -hmm. And because Glenn, for him to know, oh, her breaker just, you know, she 
Well, how do you say that? The breaker shut down, the breaker, the breaker flipped. breaker got switched or it got flipped. Yeah, the yeah. breaker flipped. Yeah. It's like he knew then there's there's no talking now. Yeah. Like he can't just out talk it now. He can't out explain right. it. He can't out. Yeah. It was almost like once I was able to say, mm, my breaker is gone. Like I'm just mm. the breaker flipped. I'm, I'm, you know, and, and I would say even now there's times when you go, um, I think I've lost you. Mm. And it's like no amount of talking to me is going to yeah. do that. Like bring it all back. It's like, I just, there's just some times when I have to figure out what's happening for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I have much better tools now for sure. But yeah. you know, when I think about other couples that have been married for decades mm. and they go, okay, we, we believe in these concepts and we want to start using them. And you know, I do like the garden and the weeds, you know, there are times when, you know, to really, um, go in like if and I think about that with some people who remodel houses some people are just like oh yeah we're just we're we're just tearing it all out mm. and starting over kind of thing right you know where others are tr- are just taking one room at a time yeah you know so there are seasons where you go we only can do one room at a time right now so we're going to start on our bathroom that's all we're going to do mm. and it there's not, I don't think that in that there's necessarily a right or a wrong. Some people would say, like I think about when you guys moved in this summer, you wanted yeah. to get the whole house painted and all these things done before y'all moved in. I think partially because people know once you move in and you kind of settle, right. that it's really hard to mm. then re- resurrect projects. Yeah. You know, you just get used to the way mm. things are. But there's times we don't have those choice. We just have to you know, get out, go ahead and move in. Like you got to do it. So I think, you know, if you use the garden analogy of being able to, sometimes you go, I think we got to get a tractor in here. Mm. Like there's so many weeds. We need to till (laughs) all the earth. Like it's beyond just us pulling weeds. Right. But what does that look like? Right. I was about to say practically, uh, I think what that gets down to is more ooing. And just Mm -hmm. recognizing the other person is experiencing what they're experiencing. And you can tell them all day long. That's what I was referencing the pastor couple, that he was sure that if he one more time told her not to experience what she was experiencing, not to feel what she was feeling, then they would be okay. That's not true. If I mean, she just is. She's experiencing what she's experiencing. We can tell her to stop it. We can tell her to shut up about it. It's not going to change anything. And that was the big shift for us. And again, a little shame in saying that it was Phyllis initially. I missed on this, I don't know, for quite some time afterwards. And Phyllis was able to slow it down and go, oh, wow, dang, hmm, yeah, those are all oohs. It's just a version of a new. And it did not mean that she understood it. And to this day, I experienced so many things that, Phyllis is clueless about. Mm-hmm. And if you got her in a court of law, she would say, nope, that doesn't make a bit of sense. And Glenn should not be experiencing that. And there's some vice versa in that. The things Phyllis experiences that I'm like, no, that's number one. I know my girl. I've been with her a heck of a long time. I know that she's not experiencing that, but she is. And number two, she shouldn't experience that. Well, okay, ride that horse for a while. See how far you get. Mm-hmm. And then what I realize is, no, she's simply experiencing what she's experiencing. And I can walk away from that interaction going, oh, sad. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me what she's experiencing. And I don't think it should be that way, but it is. So that was the biggest part. And that's what couples, I, I see the big miss with them continuously is they're certain that it should not be that way. So the better they get at ooing, Following the energy, you know, we say follow the energy all the way till the end. We don't know what the end is, but we know it when we get there. And when you get there, then to say, so what do you need? Frequently the response to what do you need is nothing. I just need you. I just needed you to be safe for me. I needed you to make safe space for me to process uh, this. And I think that's the biggest miss for most couples in the situation like it's being described in the the, um, uh, email is that they think they're supposed to understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't use those phrases. You know, people go, oh, I understand what you're going through. Number one, no, you probably don't. Number two, it doesn't even matter if you do. Uh, if you have a great fear of pick something, spiders, and I don't, 
I don't have to understand that. And I can argue with you all day long that you shouldn't feel all this fear about spiders, but you do. So for me, just to be able to ooh you and be present with you. Mm. You know, I also think we get stuck on intentions, but my intentions were good. And it's almost like we have this response where it's like, I have to prove my intentions were good. Mm. So I hurt you. You let me know that I hurt you. And I want to explain to you that my intentions weren't to hurt you. And as though there's value in that. And, and that is so common. We see that all the time is if I can just explain to you that my intentions weren't to hurt you, then you're going to feel better. And yeah, then you did not feel hurt. Right. Then it's going to all of a sudden make no. your hurt go away. Right. And it's like, that is not, that's not, it's not even, uh, it's, it's like irrelevant in all truth. Yeah. It really is. There's, there is just being able to follow someone's energy, right. hear their pain mm-hmm. is so valuable. And, and of course, as you just said, the ooing, which is just that audible response mm. that I am hearing your pain. Yeah. And then even to go, wow, I, I missed that. Yeah. And I, I feel some guilt that I missed that with you. Right. Uh, we all, because I definitely struggle with this. I, Wes mm. will say, you're the most defensive person, you know, which... I'm like, I've gotten so much better. So mm. then I'm even defending my defensiveness. <laughs> like, but look where I've come. Right. You know, um, we want to be seen as like mm. good people. Yeah. But I'm doing it. That's why, yeah. no, my intentions were good. I'm a good person. Right. I would never want to hurt you. Please don't be mad at me because I didn't want to hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that we are afraid to give people people permission or not not even permission but like to be viewed as someone who hurt someone Mm. else Mm -hmm. we have so much fear in that yeah and this is why we try to shift the language even as opposed to me saying you hurt me just to say i felt hurt Mm -hmm. because i did did you hurt me i don't know i and this is what we call the court case you know i can take phyllis to court get an attorney's judge and a jury and prove that phyllis hurt glenn Well, that, and we always say, congratulations, you won the court case. You lost the relationship, but you won the court case. So that's no great victory. And we don't know that. Uh, And of course, that's a silly thing to say, a court case. But that's what couples do all the time, not officially hire attorneys. But they're constantly presenting that, no, 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 she hurt me. No, I didn't hurt him. He just felt hurt. Well, we know that he felt hurt. So let's just stay there. And this is why we don't use phrases like, uh, you know, that you made me mad, you made me sad. You know, was Phyllis involved? Did she contribute to it? Did she perhaps exacerbate it? Maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. What I do know is I felt hurt. Mm -hmm. I got hit with shame. I felt fear when you did that. Uh, And, you know, this we were talking about this earlier. You know, if I'm driving and I know what I'm about to do driving, Phyllis doesn't. So she may get hit with fear, uh, but, but if she says, you know, well, you made me feel fear, well, now we're probably going to have a problem. Now we're going to have a, you know, a difficult time figuring this out, whereas if she just says, whew, I felt a bunch of fear whenever that happened, well, we know that that's true, mm-hmm. and I can be safe for her and go, oh, well, help me get that. What happened for you? And she says, well, I thought you were going to miss the turn, but I knew I was just trying to get around that whatever, that big truck uh, to you know, get ahead of it to get off the exit, but she doesn't know that. And so for her to say, well, you made me feel fear. Now we've got a debate on our hands, Mm -hmm. but we do know that she felt fear. Yeah. I think that we really need to drive that point home. I think that's a huge, Mm -hmm. huge turning point in relationships. When you go from the dishwasher to where you are now, it's really, it's the stopping of the pointing the finger outward. I mean, like you do this, you do this, you do this. Mm Because then the other person becomes defensive, tries to show their right. intense in, intentions, like no longer feels safe. Like everything mm. I do is wrong all the time. So why yeah. am I even trying anymore? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And instead we just recognize what is happening for us in our own bodies mm. and sharing that experience instead. Mm-hmm. I feel hurt because there's dishes in the dishwasher. Mm. Like I have sadness when there is dishes in the dishwasher and I'm trying to go to bed. Instead of saying, Wes, I feel sad that you didn't do the dishes. 
Because, mm-hmm. yeah, he didn't do them, but that's not his fault. Like, mm-hmm. it's not my anger at him. It's my no. sadness that there are literal dishes. Mm-hmm. And it has nothing to do with Wes. Mm. Yeah. And so when we start really changing our language right. yeah. inward mm. instead of outward, yeah. it creates safety also for the other person to feel yeah. like they can operate in their home and not walk on eggshells. Mm. Mm. So now you're starting to groove better with each other. I think that's yeah. a big point. It's so mm-hmm. interesting that you brought up the, the dishwa- dishes and you actually said dishes in the dishwasher. I think you meant dishes in the sink. sink totally. Yeah. Yep. Um, because that came up in two different conversations uh, last week while we were in Alaska, where it had to do with, uh, you know, the fourth phrase is, what do you need? Yeah. And and so one couple asked, I need him to, not, you know, not leave dishes in the sink. Yeah. And, or do the dishes. I guess that's the way she said it, do the dishes. And and then another scenario uh, similar, and it was, I I feel so much pain when I get up the next morning and there's dishes because mm. she goes to bed sooner or earlier. And, and it's just fascinating because you go, wow, dishes. How often do dishes A lot. Mm. knock off yeah. relationships? Yeah. Yeah. And with both of those scenarios, we talked about that the person who feels pain in it needs to express the pain mm. in it. Yeah. And yeah. that the other person makes space to hear the pain. Yeah. And I, we have this mentality where it's like, if I tell you that's a pain, then I expect you to change it. Mm. And I expect to never see dishes in the di- oh. in the sink again. Right. Or all over the counter or wherever. And w- what's cute about that scenario in those two different uh, stories that we heard last week is that the counter was cleaned off and all the dishes was put in the sink, which the person was like, I accomplished so much because mm, I cleaned off right, the counter. Well, right. And the other person was like, it would be just one more step to get them in the dishwasher. Yes. Like there's such a pain in that where mm. the other person's going, what? I cleaned off the table and I cleaned mm. off the counters right. and I put all the food away. And yeah, I put all those dishes in the sink, but that's where dishes go kind of thing. Right. And it's, it's just... For the other, though, it's a pain point. It's like mm. a dirty dish in the sink is yeah. a pain point. I relate to that. And mm. to be able to just say, this is pain for me. But I, I think that what we miss on is that we think, if I express it, that that's my pain, that you have to change it about you, mm. instead of realizing that's really not true. Yeah, It's the it's the power in you being able to show up for yourself and go, ooh. I feel pain. Mm. And, you know, I live with someone who experiences pain in areas that most people don't relate to. Mm. And, you know, it's like opening a cereal box. He has a matter of fact, we, we did a video last week yeah. um, of him opening a cereal box. The perfectly. correct way. Yes, the correct thank you very way. Much. The perfect way. Yes. And I, I filmed it and I was fascinated. I guess I, it's been a while since I've paid attention <laughs> and you know, he uses the butt of his spoon to open it perfectly. And it's like, wow, it's like you're multitasking because now you get to use the spoon for your cereal. So it's not, you're not wasting a utensil. You're actually using it for your cereal bowl. And, but it was like something interesting to watch him right. where for him, there's pain in it. If I open it, because I'm never that careful. I've never used a utensil yeah. to open a cereal box. Yeah. I use my fingers. And that way, if it rips, it's not my fault. It's the box's fault. <laughs> yeah. Like it was, it's a it stupid box. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. the people who created the box did a poor job. Yeah. Mm. I never feel mm. pain in it. And I never take responsibility. You, like to me, it's like, I didn't do anything wrong. It's the stupid box, mm. you know? But when I watch his system, I'm like, oh, that's how you arrive to perfection mm. of opening a box. But it's like, in in there's so many things that Glenn experiences as a pain point, but that doesn't mean I have to learn, which I tried early on in our marriage. Mm. I tried to learn how to do everything perfect in his world, and it was way too much for me. And so I think that's what's so important is to realize if your partner is experiencing pain, that what's so powerful is them being able to just express yeah. the pain and you making space for it. Right. Not not explaining yourself away, not saying what your intentions were, mm-hmm. not, you know, it's like, oh, I missed that. I, I get that. Or I hear you. And, you know, and it's it's not even the person. I think that's what's so huge is to realize I don't have to change who I am. Mm-hmm. 
because Glenn experiences a pain point in how I fold the laundry or in the cereal box yeah. opening. Yeah, and you know, we joke about this and we've laughed about it incredibly over the last numerous years. But just to understand what's happening scientifically with the body, whenever I see, and fill in the blank with many things, uh, you know, whenever I see torn cardboard on the cereal box, my nervous system gets dysregulated. It just does. I'm not trying for it to. And it's ridiculous for us to think that, oh, well, Glenn does that on purpose. He got up this morning going, I'm going to find places where my nervous system will get dysregulated. Of course not. So that's, and that's the pain experience. Uh, and that is a disorder of the psyche. My psyche gets disordered. I experience pain in that. And that's what we reference as a psychological disorder. I don't use that terminology because I think that pathologizes humans. But my psyche is now disordered. So Phyllis can say, stop it. Stop experiencing that and shut up about it. Or she can just be present with me and go, oh, Wow. So help me get that. What happens for you there? And I'm like, well, babe, look at the cereal box. There was a funny thing in Alaska. Our hosts actually wrote on the cereal box, which was also a pain point for me that they wrote on the cereal. You don't write on cereal boxes. Anyway, um, but they wrote open carefully. (laughs) So there were a number of smart alecks in Alaska. but um, And they uh, posted several little notes around the thing because they are connection coders and they know some of my stuff. Uh, and but, you loved it. <laughs> like, that was so sweet and thoughtful of yes. them. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were uh, over the top yeah. as far as just tuning into us. But I just feel pain in these things. And what's amazing to me is, number one, you being present with me, mm-hmm. you being able to ooh me, uh, just follow my energy. And, and it doesn't mean that you have to do the thing differently. It just means that you're present with me. But what also happens is my pain dissipates incredibly. And there are scenarios now just like that. If you open the cereal box incorrectly, quote and unquote, uh, it's a pain experience. My nervous system gets dysregulated. My psyche gets disordered. But I'm able to process through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, 25 years ago, uh, it was overwhelming and unbearable. And now I'm just able to be present with you uh, as well. Right. Mm-hmm. So I want to play that out for just a second, just so people can see where they fall right now. So there are different options of what you could do. You know, you had said there is the option where Phyllis could say, Glenn, stop feeling this. But there's actually another option of what she could do. So I think non-connection coders, those of us, m- me five years ago, I walk in, for me, it's dishes. There's dishes in the sink. Wes, why didn't you, Mm. like, you didn't do the dishes. And then he's responding, I did everything else. Look at everything else I did. Like, you can't appreciate anything. And now we are spiraling the rest of the Mm. day. Then there's like the next level connection coder. You know, you're starting this process. You walk in, Wes, I feel really sad that you didn't do the dishes last Mm. night. You think, I'm doing a great job because I'm expressing my sadness. Mm. Well, in that moment... Wes is still on the defense mm. and he, his brain could not be awoke, woke up enough mm. to hear that core emotion, to connect with me. And so he could still do the cycle of, but I did everything else. Right. Or I feel angry because you don't see everything else I'm mm. doing. And then we have the next level of, wow, I feel really sad that we have a lot of dishes in there in the sink right mm. now. And then Wes saying, yeah, I get that sad. We do. We have a lot of dishes. We have so many kids. There's a lot of dishes in the sink. Mm. And then we can move on together. And so it's really just practicing that Mm -hmm. outward and inward. And if you're pointing the finger out at the other person, even if you're expressing that core emotion, they're going to be pointing the finger right back at you. Yeah. Unless they are just in a really healthy, controlled state of mind, which we're not often operating at. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, and that's one of our pain points with people when they use the connection codes, when they weaponize them, uh, just like you're describing. It's like, well, I told him my core emotion. Yeah, you did, so that you could punch him in the face Mm. with it, so you could beat him over the head with it. Now, the next step even beyond that, Tyr, is I would love for uh, whoever, but in this situation, I would love for Tyr to just be able to go, oh, sad. And for Wes to be able to go, oh, wait, what's happening with sad? What am I missing there? Well, the dishes. I just feel sadness. Uh, and if you want to get really crazy advanced to be able to go, now my nervous system is dysregulated. 
And for West to go, oh, help me get that, what's happening there. Because now we've taken it completely out of the accusation against Wes. Right. Again, was Wes involved? Did Wes contribute to it some, exacerbate it? I don't know. I well, don't really care. He ate off one of the plates in there. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So, but instead for Tira just to be able to say, I feel pain. Right. I just feel sadness. And what we see happening, and I'm not talking about magic fairy dust, but what we see happening is now Wes is tuned in to the other human in right. the situation. He can see her humanness that, oh, my friend just feels sadness. She just feels pain. She's not blaming me. She's not accusing me. Was I, Wes, involved? Yes. But the reality is she's just experiencing pain. Right. And what we see happening is now the one human is aware of the other human's humanness and can respond to that so much better than if it is uh, the, the accusation. Uh, and again, that's one of my greatest pain points that... Um, uh, and, and we even say to people, uh, you know, the, I mean, one of several things that we say about it, but the connection codes are the most challenging thing you'll ever do in your life. It's also the most rewarding, but people navigate this differently, and some of them things get much worse uh, because what they've been doing for years is hiding from each other. Mm. And so they have some sort of, what's that called, detente. You know, they have some sort of detente scenario where, and that's what Phyllis and I did for years. And our second decade of marriage, people thought we had a great marriage. That's because we had learned to not talk to each other about any topic that mattered. So and by then we had several babies. So we're just doing logistical stuff, taking care of the babies, keeping them alive, work stuff, the house. And so we didn't talk about anything of depth. So it looked like, well, they're doing really well. They're doing much better. And we let all the marriage ministries and marriage classes. And, you know, we were the go-to couple. We weren't connected at all. We were just living in the same house, and we had stopped engaging on any level of, of depth at all. So anyway, uh, just for Tira to just be able to go, yep, it's pain. It's a sadness. That's what I'm experiencing in the moment. And what we find typically when it's set up that way is now Wes can be so much more present with you. And now you can partner going, uh, and for Wes to say, so what do you need? And for Tira to go, well, I need the dishes done. How can we make this uh, happen? How, how can we set this up? And now they're partnering in the experience. A lot of people go, are you kidding me? We have to do that. I should just be able to, you know, yell out an order and it be, uh, it'll be so much faster. That's so much slower right. because now they're going to be disconnected for an hour and a half or a day and a half or a week and a half, so much slower. Whereas if you can slow it down in the moment, get to the core emotion, you'll actually be able to process through that probably in minutes then probably do the dishes together in a few more minutes and it's done. Right. And now total time, we're probably 10 minutes into this. And 10 minutes is a heck of a lot less than an hour and a half or a day and mm. a half or a week and a half. Totally. And we're not saying to not tune into each other's pain. We have a whole other podcast where we talk yeah. about pain points. And, you know, we share that Phyllis was experiencing pain and that was a pain that she was able to express mm. and that Glenn was able to partner with her on. And so when your partner is expressing their pain and you're able mm -hmm. to partner in with them on, man, you're just raising the bar in your marriage. Oh yeah, You are taking it to a whole yeah. nother level. Yeah. We want you to start with safety. Mm. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking yeah. about building that safety and being able to Look yeah. inward instead of point outward so you can both be safe with each other yeah. and not accusatory or defensive. Mm -hmm. And then that next level is tuning into that pain and saying, oh, you feel sad that there's the dishes? I have five minutes before work. Mm -hmm. I can do those really quickly. Yeah. You know, it's really taking it to that next level mm -hmm. and partnering together. Yeah. That's so... Yeah. As you know, before we finished on this one, because I, I keep going back to that email that came in, I, I'm thinking for me that's been so huge. And I, in processing what's happening with Glenn and him being able to process with me, is that I am able, instead of taking it in and letting it sit mm. in my gut, I'm able just to make space for it, yeah. but not take it in. Mm. And I And I think often, even when you think about the couples that have been married a really long time yeah. and then they start using these tools and it's like, Oh my word, you're, you're, you're weeding out, right. You're cleaning out. And, and that's can be such a painful process. Mm. But when, when you realize that actually we need to get all of that 
out. It's like when you go after, you know, whatever it is, gangrene. You want to make sure you mm. get all the gangrene oh. out. Even if it's a really painful yeah. process, you want to get it all out. And so I want to know all of Glenn's pain. I want to know, uh, you know, and, and of course we've been together a really long time. So there's times when he remembers something that was 35 years ago. Mm. Right. And him expressing that pain does not mean I have to now take it inside myself and just mm. absorb it and sit in it. It's like, oh, I can just make room for it. And that's, I think, I know, I'm very thankful that I'm able to do that, mm. that I'm able yeah. to hear his pain. I'm able to make space for it, follow his energy. Uh, wow, I missed that. Or oh, I hear that. And yeah, that was that was a really rough time without me going into a self sabotage i'm a horrible human being and mm -hmm. i have so much to change about myself yeah. it's more mm -hmm. that this is just pain for him yeah. and yes i am the one involved in it i'm mm -hmm. the other person in this scenario and you know often glenn will even say you won't believe what my wife said to me mm -hmm. and and you know i know that i'm his wife but it's like even in that wording, it's it's what he experienced. And it's more, it's not even necessarily that those were words that ever came out of my mouth. It's oh, how absolutely. he experienced yeah. the those mm -hmm. words that I, you know, just like me saying, I thanks for unloading the dishwasher. He never heard this, the, just the thank you in that. He right. heard mm. so many other messages. But yeah. I am the one who said, thank you for unloading the dishwasher. Mm. Right. But it's, it's such a huge journey. And, you know, even Glenn saying, wow, I'm getting to know Phyllis more in yeah. the last few years than ever. Yeah. Well, it's because Phyllis is getting to know Phyllis mm -hmm. and I yeah. am opening doors I've never opened in my life. Yeah. I am allowing myself to feel and to ha like tune into my emotions. That's all new for me. Yeah. And so it's like when you tune into your own emotions, you've got, you start to go, whoa, I feel fear in that. And mm -hmm. I feel pain in that. And, right. you know, even driving over here this morning, um, I shared that it's not that I don't love driving. I don't want to drive when Glenn is sitting in the car with mm. me because I'm. I, it, it brings a level, another mm. layer of fear that he's going to criticize my driving. Yeah. yeah. And a, a lot of that comes back from our early years of marriage where I could never do anything right. So, you know, I didn't fold the laundry right. I didn't put the dishes away right. I didn't put the money away right. I didn't. So the list was so long mm. that, I'm like, well, I'm not even, I'll just let him drive, but it's not because I hate driving. Mm. It's just the, I don't want to risk driving with him in the car because he'll point out that I should mm. either slow down, speed up, you know, stop, don't stop at that red light, go on through or whatever it is. It's like, turn, you could turn before that truck, get, go ahead, turn. And I'm right. just like, oh my goodness. I hear that in my head, even if he's not saying it right. because of our early years and so for me, it's just like not worth it. Just you drive, you be my chauffeur everywhere we go because I don't want to drive. Yeah. But but what I shared with him this morning, it's like that's what you experience. Like I think for him, it was new information. Mm, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. it's just to realize that as I get to know myself, and I I am learning to express mm. my pain. I'm learning to express my fears. Then he gets to know me on a deeper level mm. more than ever. And so with a lot of you listeners, it's realizing as you start tuning into yourself and you start expressing things that are happening for you, the other person, they may realize, whoa, I, who are you? You right. know, like right. I didn't realize I thought you were always the most stable or strong or had no fear. It's like, yeah, I have fear. I just never told you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I also in thinking about the weeding of the garden, you know, I know that it feels like you can only do so many square feet every day and you're pulling it out and some of them have deep roots. And so you may have to come back another day mm. to get that one. Mm. Um, but I also want to remind you that y'all say this a lot and it's something that I'm finding with Wes and I, a lot of our fights today are not because of new damages mm. we're doing to each other. Right. They're yep. because of things from the past. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're from because those roots are trying to 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 grow a little bit more. Yep. They're still kind of embedded in there a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage you that you are not creating. If you are practicing, mm -hmm. you're doing the wheel, you're slowing down with each other, you're pointing inward instead of outward. You are not you're not putting new weeds in. Mm -hmm. 
And so yeah. that is progress that you're making. Absolutely. You're planting flowers with each other. When you start mm. to say, how can I partner with you? Mm. Those are flowers that you're mm-hmm. putting in your garden. And so now you're starting to grow new things. And yes, you still see the weeds. You still feel the weeds. But if you keep slowing down, you will get there. Mm. You will eventually yeah. discover okay, we just have to figure out this root system that's old, that every once in a while pops its ugly head, but you are not planting new weeds mm. and not doing more damage. Yeah. Wow. So do we want to close out by doing the, the core emotion? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, of today? course. I guess everybody knows there's a fly flying around here. I'm so sorry. Re- I'm oh, no. so sorry. I don't think our I just, listeners I, necessarily really? hear. I wondered that. Can do you all see hear it? the fly? No, they I don't, don't hear the fly, but if people... <laughs> are watching on YouTube and they just see us like oh. dodging this one fly <laughs> that wants to be around yeah. us. I didn't know if they could see the fly. I guess if it's on your phone, that'd be pretty tiny. They might think it's a gnat. Oh, but it's actually a, they a may not notice fly. it at all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is there a pain in that for you? <laughs> well, I just didn't know what you're supposed to do. Oh, okay. There should be some okay. rule about this. See, it's right there. Go away, okay. fly. Shoo. I don't think you're supposed to shoo it. Really? Yeah, that brings more attention to it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid on the farm, we'd shoot horses. So we, we should shoo flies. Get it? It's Let's like a pun. It's like a pun. Shoo, shoo fly, don't yes. bother me. Okay. Yeah. But I'm talking about like shooing. Oh, oh well. Sorry. Okay. okay. Mm. Will you go first? <laughs> In the wheel. I'll go first. Mm. Uh, let's see, felt, uh, a bit of fear last night driving home and Mm. knowing that something was going wrong with the car took probably a minute to figure Mm. out it was a tire and you're on the interstate. What do you do? And it's dark and it's late. Oh, so yeah, felt a lot of fear, felt sadness in that. I also felt sadness having to wake up this morning since Mm. we're still on Alaska time. So my body was sad, Mm. like, Ooh, could use a day. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see, lonely, um, I think lonely comes in waves for me at times. So, um, and I, and I think it, you know, we talk about this often, just lonely in all that needs to be done, um, in, in just what the connection codes is trying to do. So feeling alone, um, in that Tira, I asked you how you were feeling, you know, yeah. just there's times we feel alone, like, mm. ah, we need more help. Um, hurt. My hurt is always connected, you know, with you. So I was trying to think of, um, the hurt. And I, I was thinking there was a conversation yesterday where, uh, I think I said one thing and your mind went somewhere else. And so you started actually I talking about that and I wasn't even finished really sharing. And so I felt some hurt in Mm. that and then misunderstood. Mm. And so I had, we talked about it again where I said, I feel like I didn't really get to say all Mm. that I need to say. So I felt some hurt in that. And, um, sometimes you, it it is funny because even the, the, the last night in Alaska, which was last night, right? No, the night Mm. before. (laughs) Oh, I don't know. But you interrupt me and mm. I'm trying to really share a really deep thought. Right. And then you're like this little kid because you got distracted with a silly um, croissant and you all of a mm. sudden had to have a croissant and then you had to have butter on it and then mm. you had to have honey on it oh, and then yes. you had to have jelly on it. And I'm like, babe, I'm trying to share this. Like, this is our last moment with these people. Mm. I get hurt in those scenarios because mm. you're yeah. like so distracting. Mm. Um, so that was my last that was several hurts, actually. Mm. So need to speed up. Um, <laughs> let's see. Guilt and, and shame, I think. Uh, well, yeah, in the moment, I think this morning, just feeling um, some guilt and shame that I have all these, like, personal goals mm. that I want to do for myself. And just I, I actually have a health coach at this moment, and I did not – do great Mm. in Alaska. Um, I did okay, but I want to be perfect. Mm. And so I'm pretty hard on myself when I, when we travel, it's really challenging for me to stay on any kind of personal Mm. plan of any kind. So feel some guilt and shame about that. Um, let's see anger. I think my anger is just in realizing how in talking to so many people over the past two weeks is just that we as um, as churches have abandoned mm. the conversation of sex. The topic of sex 
And, you know, it was that way 40 years ago when we got married, and it's not any better. Yeah. And we don't help people. We don't talk about it. Yeah. We have abandoned it still. And yeah. so many people are so hurting because of this one topic. So I feel a lot of anger right. about that. Yeah. Joy. Uh, I feel joy in being home, at least for a few days. I know mm-hmm. we're headed to California next week, but just being home is... A lot of joy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, for me, um, so much joy in the whole Alaskan trip. Mm. That was uh, yeah. kind epic. of an epic <laughs> life trip, but also everything we got to do with the connection codes. Yeah. Just seeing lives shift. Um, mm. Getting to partner with you in this is amazing. If I was having to do this by myself, oof, I don't know that mm. I'd ever really uh, do it. So, so much joy in the whole experience. A lot of sadness seeing people that have been in a church setting for decades and have never felt heard, have never Mm -hmm. felt uh, safe, you know, just being in those settings. And to realize we've been doing this for uh, centuries in our Mm -hmm. church groups that we do this church thing and people are not touched at all. But we sure think we're doing church, which I think Mm -hmm. is an anti-church actually. But a bit of loneliness in that too at times that, thinking, are, are we the only voices out there? Uh, I feel like mm. there's so much stuff talked about, oh, do church more, do stuff better, bigger, but we're not even including the people. The people are irrelevant. And my positioning is that that's the only thing uh, that matters. Uh, fear in saying that at times, uh, fear about pushback and people being offended, and, and then they won't be able to hear the message because the messenger, me, has messed up <laughs> the, mm. the whole setup. So... Fear and walking that delicate uh, balance. Uh, some guilt and shame just that I miss stuff with you, just being aware of you, tuning in mm. to you. Uh, I get flooded with joy sometimes, and I just like with the croissant, that uh, <laughs> literally is a joy experience. I'm just so excited because we were at these people's house and they had croissants. Um, and I just miss you, which is what really matters. Mm. That's the uh, number one uh, thing. Um, uh, anger just about our faith based, uh, circles that are missing people mm-hmm. so horribly yeah. uh, and thinking that, no, no, we're doing church, we're doing church and the numbers are increasing, mm. but really people are dying, uh, just all around us. And we're, and especially in the sexual uh, yeah. arena, it's like good grief people. How can we mm. be so blind, especially as leaders? Uh, but I know this just passed on, you know, generation mm-hmm. to generation. Uh, and I think that's all of them. It's hard for me to remember wow. sometimes. Well, I just realized that I, we need. There's to, eight words in this language. Know, Who know. knows? It's we need to, to do some shout outs. I want to shout yeah. out to Petra and Jeff for yeah. taking us salmon fishing mm. and just being so hospitable. And yes. wow. And Quentin was an amazing uh, guide. Yeah. And, and hopefully uh, a new connection coder. Yes, we introduced That was our, pretty wild our, doing all that our, with him. What do you call that when somebody drives a boat? The boater. The boater, the fisherman, the <laughs> yeah. pilot, the captain captain of yeah. the boat. But he sure. was, that was Quentin. He was fantastic. Yes. And um, then also a shout out to Joni and Josh who, mm. who made so many Amazing. special things happen yes. for us. And they arranged for us to get to mm. go sight, flight seeing, flight, flight seeing, seeing yeah. um, in the plane. And Vince yeah. was our pilot on that. It was just amazing. Mm. The people, the hospitality. And, and Beth, don't forget oh, Vince's wife. Yes, Vince Beth, and Beth so took us up in their plane. Yeah. And so many special moments. So mm-hmm. shout out to a lot of people there. And Kristen. Kristen, who, who did gets all so of my weird stuff. Much. And, she was yes. responsible for the cereal box. Yeah. Yes. So awesome. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> So many people that yeah. really blessed Amazing. us while we were in Alaska. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing. And mm. also doing this core emotion will every day, yes. you know, this is where you are able to share your hurt, mm. you know, mm. and just ooh each other. There's mm. not any room for being defensive in it because your only right. job is to ooh the yes. other person. Right. Yeah. And um, so make sure you're doing that every day with your partner and experiencing just incredible growth with each other. Yeah, and I want to throw in real quickly, buy a case of the books. I'm telling you, do your (laughs) Christmas shopping. We said this a lot in Alaska. If you buy somebody some socks or a toaster for Christmas, hopefully they'll say thank you. They won't remember by the Mm. end of January where they got that. You get them a copy of this book, I'm telling you, 
They will thank you at least all year and maybe the rest of their lives because it will change so much for them. And that's what we're hearing people all over the world. They're like, oh, this changes everything. And we hear that phrase continually. Oh, this changes everything. And it's true. And it, we're so passionate about this because we live it. We're mesmerized by it. And it will happen for you. It will happen for your family, for your friends, uh, for your team. And I uh, just really encourage you to do that is spread this book around because it is dynamite. A hundred percent. Thank you so much. And thank you all to our listeners for being here today. We yeah. are just so blessed by you. Whenever we read your reviews and whenever you message us or send us an email, it's just so impactful to know that we're not speaking into a black void. So if you have not already left a review, we would love for you to not only go and leave us five stars, but if you could write something out of how the connection codes or this podcast has impacted you, that would be absolutely incredible. Yeah, so, absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. And please know that you need this. You deserve this. So let's, let's do, do this. this. Let's do this.